I remember when I first started playing, I was 10 kgs lighter and I did a rush into the rucks with the biggest, you know, the biggest chicks on the field. So yeah, your body is an absolute blessing. What you put in it, how you train it, what you do with it. That's ultimately the only physical tool you've got. Like how you're gonna sharpen it, how you're gonna build it. So I love it, I love it. And yeah, I'd come to the gym every day if I could. <laughs> Yeah, for me it was it was a bit hard. Um, I was I didn't really know where I was living as a kid. Like I was I was back and forth a lot um, between mum and dad, and um, mum was moving around a lot, and she was going through her own battles. So um, she was trying to start a new family. Um, she had a, she had a son, my brother, and um, her. My brother's father, their relationship wasn't always the best, so that was hard for me. I wanted to stay and help her, but I also didn't want to have to be another mouth to feed, you know? So from a young age, I was looking after my brother and trying to just support mum as much as I could. And um, yeah, it was, it was a bit hard back then and what, what my mum went through for, for me and my brother. And you know very early on as a kid, what side you, you know, what way you want to live your life. I didn't know what a good life looked like. I just knew what a bad one looked like. <laughs> and I knew if I went there, I, you know, I'd seen the worst of the worst. And I'd seen what happened to people if they go down that road. And there's, there was just no way. From my mum's side, you know, she was always really um, big on nutrition and she really wanted me to get a good education. She went to both university and polytech and she might not have had a lot, but she always, drove me in those areas um, and then on my summer side I didn't really get that but I got you know love and family values family first you know family never says no family never says thank you it's just always there yeah so um, I was born in Wellywood um, Wellington 91 and I've always come back here my granddad and my dad always pretty much been here and yeah it's always been the base for our family it's just a lot of love, a lot of family, and I know that um, I can always come back here and I gotta feed on the table, so it's really nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, you keep practicing them, mate. Right? One day you'll find your sweet spot and you kick like barrels in there. <laughs> they look like they've got it on the string sometimes. <laughs> Every time I see it, I like to like tell her, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. You're not doing this. You're not <laughs> oh, you can tell your mate this. <laughs> oh, and your coach. <laughs> yeah. Dad's, he's real proud and he's always, you know, let me know that he loves me and that and I guess that comes out in different ways and yeah, every time I visit he chucks on a game or gives me a little tip and, you know, because I guess all dads want to help, especially when it comes to sport, don't they? So, no, but it's cool that, um, that we have that, you know, and that he can share that and pass on his love or his alofa that way, so, wow, it's all good. You know, the rugby takes us all around the world, it's beautiful, but it takes us away from our family, it takes us away from, you know, seeing my dad and my sisters and that, and you've, you have to believe in what you're doing if you're doing stuff like that, you know. You've got to believe it and hear that it's worth it. Um, so, being able to come back and share and visit and give my family a hug and a kiss, you know, that's... When I leave and I go to training, I, you know, I feel, my heart feels full again, and it's hard to keep giving to the crowds and your coaches and your team if your heart's not full, you know. So I'm, I'm blessed to have this, this heart filling family. It's cool coming back. I mean, you know, these kids are, this might be their reality now, but it's cool to realise that the potential's endless. Back when we were cousins just rolling around, you, yeah, you never thought, far, I never thought I'd end up playing in places like San Fran and Paris. Like, there was, they're just pictures on a postcard, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's humbling and it's good. Hello! On the west coast, you know, it's a small town, so I'm growing up playing netball. And, you know, a netball, you, it's a non-contact sport. It's not. Everybody contacts. But you've got to contact the right way. So I grew up in high school, like, getting frustrated because I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to contact without being seen and, you know, all the, getting hit, but they'd have refed it. And, like, I'm like, oh! And then I find rugby 
and all of a sudden you you expect you know like all you do is contact so it was yeah the rugby when i found it i was just like why have i never why didn't i just do this my whole life you know man sports um really taught me a lot about life and i think we can take a lot out of it so i learned what made me feel good and what made me feel bad pretty early on and sports always always made me feel good i've learned that as a as a sportswoman myself if, if i ever see a kid or see someone struggling or I'm approached by a kid, I will give them my 100% attention, you know, because I can't stress enough how much of an effect you can have on that person because those are the people that got me through and showed me the different ways of life and showed me what it felt like to have success, you know, and, and, and that different path because I didn't know what it looked like, but they knew. It might be half an hour out of your life, but that kid will remember that half an hour for the rest of their life. I left uni and I walked into an opportunity that it wasn't a job, it wasn't secure, it wasn't safe. Um, I moved, you know, moved my whole life, um, packed up my car as much as the stuff as it was fit and I just drove up here, you know, like a 10 hour drive, whatever it was. And, you know, I got here and I, it doesn't necessarily, I was gonna make the team, it didn't mean I was gonna make the team, it didn't necessarily mean I was gonna be in the Black Friend Sevens, but I just, I don't know, something felt right, you know, about, about following your passion and following something you love, following your dreams. And I think if I didn't do it, I just would have regretted it. I'm lucky because I was there when it wasn't paid. I couldn't afford things like sports bra, you know, I, I remember I had um, tops and I had to cut them and just wear two of those or, yeah, my boots were falling to pieces, but, you know, that's, that's what made me who I, who I am and I was okay with that. When I began, it was kind of, just the end of this really strong Wahinetoa era where only the most daring woman, only the most independent, courageous woman were willing to put their hand up and play rugby, you know? It was, you, you don't really do that, you're not supposed to do that. So if you can imagine all these women coming together saying, hey, we can make a brand new legacy with the Sevens jersey, we can go to the Olympics, we can inspire a nation. That is, that's a courageous thought. So every single person in that team with that jersey on are independent, strong women. If we harness that in the right way, we stay humble and remember that, there's no doubt in my mind that we have the ability to be one of the greatest sports teams in the world, or for Sevens to be one of the greatest sports in the world as well. So it's, it's exciting. I'm so glad I didn't listen to people that at the time I looked up to and they told me I'd never get paid to do this then, or I'd never be able to make a life out of it and we did, you know, we did it. Um, you, can, you can now go down to the shop and buy a Black Friend Sevens jersey. Like, that's, that still blows my mind to this day and I've learnt that the people who love you, and they will understand that it's your dream and they'll never want to take away from you something that makes your heart beat so hard out of your chest, you know, you can't contain it and I'm wearing my family name on my back every single game I play which is so, so special to me and there's no limit really. Beautiful sky's the limit. <laughs>